sometime in the 2020s, two geeks from across social media formed an alliance to bring you geek news from across the nostalgiaverse. They are Jacob's Toys and Super Soul. So strap yourselves in for the weekly live show that brings you toy news, TV and movie reviews, special guests, opinions, tangents, and bad impressions. Reveals, releases, thoughts, and maybe dreams. So prepare yourselves for The Geek Week in Review. Live. Hello, hello, hello! It's the Geek Week in Review Live with me, Jacob's Toys, and of course, the wonderful one and only Super Sorrel. We're on episode 147, and what a Geek Week it has been, Sorrel! Hey? It's been an amazing week. Put your mic down. Stuff that's coming. <laughs> it's been an amazing week! <laughs> there we go, there we go. Um, yes, it has. Before we get into it, let's say very quickly, if you are watching us live, we will get to the comments as we go through the show. A um, couple of shout outs very quickly. Uh, we'll go Ezra Gantos, Todd World, Sean the Sheep, Luda Springs. Still one of my favorite <laughs> names. How you doing, buddy? Uh, Andy Roberts is there. Bethany Beth. Started with a click. Shelly. Uh, Joby One's in the chat. Hey, Joby One. Figure Fan 36 said, T and the Geek Week podcast. What a perfect evening. That's the most British thing we could have on a British <laughs> podcast. Good to see you, Figure Fan 36. Uh, we've got Hellboy 13 as well in the chat as well. So, hi, guys. Keep it going. We will get to everybody else as we work our way through. Um, and if you're watching us on Catch Up, sorry, what is it that I need to put in the chat? Hashtag Catch Up Crew. The Catch Up Crew is slowly building up. We are getting lots of hashtag Catch Up Crews, aren't we? So, mm. that's really cool to see you guys watching it on repeat. So, if you're watching it on repeat, make sure you put that in the chat so that we know that you're watching elsewhere. Talking about watching, we go out across a bunch of different channels, so it doesn't matter where you're watching it, as long as you're watching, um, join in with the comments, and we will try to get everybody together in on the screen. Well, I think we have go. most areas covered, don't we? I mean, like, I'm currently going out live over my YouTube and Twitch. What about you? Where do you go? Like, Where's this uh, going out for you? We've got Facebook, we've got YouTube, uh, Instagram occasionally, and every now and again, until they get it sorted, we go on TikTok <laughs> as well. So, um, yeah, we go out across a few different places. Um, yeah, so make sure you head over to Jacob's Jacob's Toys and check out Jacob's Toys channel, um, as well as watching right here on the Super Soul channel as well if you're watching there. Uh, but yeah, we are. I have going live on Twitch. Um, I'm going to make that a weekly thing now. So if you are watching on Twitch, hello to all the randomers right. that don't know who I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going yeah, to have to Twitch into it as well. Actually, I've got a Twitch set up, and occasionally I've thrown it in there, but. Well, yeah. the thing, the thing, so the thing is, I talk about like I've been talking for ages about because I do like the Five Nights at Freddy's, the Poppy's Playtime. The I like to do all my like kids games like Roblox and Stumble Guys. So I mean, I thought, well, where, where's a better place to do gaming than on Twitch rather than on YouTube? I've, I kind of do my toys on YouTube, and I want right. to leave that alone. So I thought, I'll, where, where, where does gaming live stream live and die? Well, that, that's over on Twitch. Twitch, yeah, yeah. We've got loads to talk about this week, so like oh, it has yeah. been a packed week so let's just very quickly do a quick synopsis of everything we're going to go over this week because we've got wrestlemania we can talk about wrestlemania uh figure fan 36 has said that in the chat obviously we had the second night didn't we that we we went out last sunday um and it was the second night and we were predicting oh, it was so e the, that movie. ending the ending was so epic i can't wait to talk about that yeah. We'll talk about that. Um, there's a couple of people saying X Men '97. I don't know what you're talking about. X Men '97 <laughs> happened this week. I'm not quite sure. Uh, we've got that, of course. There was, of course, Cinema Con as well. Um, mm. Loads of news from that. Um, we've got uh, a couple of other trailers that came out. We had um, a certain sequel to Joker dropped yeah. trailer. Um, we had uh, a couple of other movie news. A couple. Uh, blah, 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 blah couple of other new movie news bits to mm -hmm. talk about as well and of course on amazon prime we saw every single episode of fallout drop well you did i'm on i'm on episode two i'm on episode six <laughs> <laughs> stop watching i just could not stop watching i started watching it and i was like ah, i've got another hour let's go <laughs> yeah. oh, i can do this while i'm watching it but yeah i just couldn't stop watching it but we'll we'll get to that where should we start where should we start should we talk about what we picked up this week yeah i got some random pickups this week what about you i got quite a lot surprisingly mm -hmm. i actually had quite a lot 
Mm. Yeah, did you have you seen that Ken is now available at Smith's if you need Ken for you? You can see a little tower of Street Fighters going on behind you. They are there, they are there. I do need a Ken. Is he available at Smith's? He's then? now available at Smith's. Yeah, I did my video this week and uh, I went to Smith's and I did my, you know, what's new for April? And um, Ken is there, twenty four ninety nine is on the shelf waiting in most wow. people's because uh, I, I did like a stock like a stock check and you can see it in stock at most at most yeah. places now. Oh, brilliant! Okay, they had no, they had cool. a, they had some really cool stuff in stock. I mean, they had they had, they had the Ken, uh, but then I mean, they had these new Yumi toys, Deadpool's as well, Hero Boxes as they're calling them. Nice. These are like uh, deluxe kind of mystery mini kind of things. There's like Deadpool as a as a, um, a French maid and Deadpool as Cupid, Deadpool with a with a kitty. There's so nice. many different and like one. I, I want the one riding a unicorn. But yeah, Deadpool is so, so hot right now. Let's be honest. It's like... Oh, they've they've also done Spider Man, and it's a tower. So it's the Daily Bugle, and there's different Spider Men hanging off. Like you, you basically build the tower as you go, and there's the six, the six to collect. And there's Japanese Spider Man. There's uh, Armored Spider Man. Sorry, uh, yeah, Armored Spider Man. Um, the animated Spider Man. The movie Spider Man. There's all different multiverse versions of Peter Parker, and they all hang on the tower basically, and it looks so epic. Wow, I'm gonna have to. Are they by the same brand? Yep, you. It's Yumi Toys, and it's called the Hero Box. They're doing oh, dead. They've, they've got Deadpool and Spider Man so far in Hero Box, and then they've got um, Disney Stitch as well. He's out as now. Who's got like they've got like a Elvis Stitch and stuff like that. Oh, That's nice. Quite cool. I did actually go to Smiths at the weekend. Um, I went yesterday, Saturday, but they didn't have a Ken in mine. Um, but there was like this big Lego event going on, so I was like, oh, mm. just, yeah, whatever. Um, also, um, we've got Emma O'Neill in the chat as well saying, hey, how are both of you? We're both very good. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I went to I went to Smith's, um, not for a pickup, but just for a little bit of a browse. I had a really mm. random one this week. So I had three Marvel Legends, which is mm. a bit random for me now. So I got um, X-Men 97, Goblin Queen, Madeline Pryor, and X-Men 97, Cyclops. Um, he's just here. I can just grab it. Here he is. But bizarrely, the reason I picked this one up and I've said it in the video where I did the review was not to go with my X-Men setup. It was to go with my yellow and blue suits because the yellow and hmm. blue in the costume is exactly the same as the yellow and blue in those two, three packs that we got. Hmm. Um, so I just wanted the Cyclops to go with them. Um, I got Angel as well. Had to pick up Angel just to go with my X-Men. And then I spoke about it last week. Yeah. I got the whole team... <laughs> in this kind of slimer slimed version i just thought you know what if i don't grab them now i'll regret it where'd you get them so, from amazon mate where amazon. how much were they these were varied prices but they were all under all under 15 i think oh, um, i know where soup is going after the show but they have gone up <laughs> they have gone up yeah oh, so no. i kind of had them in my basket for a while and then you know when amazon does it does this thing where yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's just it tells you it goes up and down yeah so i was like oh, i'll grab them so yeah so i've got ghostbusters i've got x-men what else did i get i've got something else random as well well it'll come to me later on but yeah got some random stuff got some random stuff um figure fan 36 said that cyclops is fire um he is he's definitely a good cyclops very cartoony looking though he is very cartoony looking right like, in the face but still just, just to wind shelly up because I, i'm not sure if shelly's in the chat yeah it's in a name pop-up but i know she's still waiting on her pre-order because she messaged me on instagram but i found her <laughs> with the uh the the wizard of oz pops her out yes um so i've so far i've found i did find glinda the good witch but i'm not really bothered for glinda the good witch um but i, I keep finding just cowardly lion on his own i really want to pick up like tin man the lion and scarecrow together I kind of don't want to like buy one if I can't find the other two. So I'm probably going to get them off Funko Europe's website. But yeah, I managed to find the, uh, Dorothy and Wicked Witch of the West, so I'm happy about that. Nice. I must Prepare. admit, one thing that is cool about Funko is that they do go back and deal with some like yeah. older properties, which is cool. Um, I also had a Diamond Select delivery. So we haven't spoke about that since the last show. Uh, yep. I did get a Diamond Select delivery. Uh, they sent me a Captain America. That's sweet. I didn't get one of those, funny enough. Like, I got the two turtles I did a video mm. on. So I've got that diorama building up. I've just got that final piece of the turtles, to the, the Donatello, to slot in. Um, but I'll talk about that in a sec. Carry on with what you got. Jean-Claude Van Damme. I love that he comes with the two chairs as well. Yeah. So you can do the, split. the splits. <laughs> <laughs> 
And now I've got one that's, it's not going to be for everyone, but I think it's going to be for a lot of people that, like yourself, Jacob, like to build dioramas and like to have accessories. Um, but you know, I, you know, I can't turn down a damn good blind box. You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. so you know, lol dolls. Yes. So they've now created, the yeah, they've they've now created the lol boys, and it's the arcade heroes, and it comes in a fancy arcade little system. Yeah. So I'm gonna see what it. I'm gonna do a full review on. It. I'm gonna see what it looks like out of this packaging. So I haven't opened it up yet, yep. and it's kind of it's still sealed at the minute. But basically, it's a proper arcade unit. It's got the buttons and everything. It's got like the actual like control stick, and they're all real buttons and stuff. They're all like actual buttons. That's cool. so like that's really cool. I mean, I've not. I've I love the fact that it's got a proper a proper gear stick that moves as well. It moves left and right. Oh wow. Um, and apparently it comes with like a coin that you insert to open it up or something. I don't know, but anyway, it's a it's got like sparkly on them. <laughs> it's all sparkly, but um, I did see that on your channel. I saw your little kind of haul video, um, mm. and I was going to message you, but I thought, you know what, you're probably going to show it off on the show, so <laughs> I'm going to tell you face to face. But I think, like, personally, I want to see what it's like out of the box. If it's mm -hmm. if it's got a decent shell, even if it's a decent shell, um, you it can be painted. You can edit it, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. yeah. So, and it'll it's it's only fifteen quid, which I don't, I don't think is that bad, because um, I know some of those accessory sets that come with the, those arcade units sell out quite quick online, and they go for big money on the aftermarket. Oh yeah, and even a three D printer, mm. like three D print service, like even your your kind of very well priced printers would charge more than fifteen quid for for something that size anyway. So. Yeah. And my another thing that I got the last thing now, sorry, last thing, promise, uh, oh. but. Monster High's complete rip-off of Poison Ivy I've ever seen. Wow. <laughs> Venus. <laughs> so she's the she's apparently the daughter the daughter of Venus Flytrap. And her name is li is literally Venus McFly. And uh, <laughs> let's just hit yeah. all the different properties. <laughs> let's just rip everyone off while we're yeah. at it. I'm surprised they didn't say she's the daughter of Audrey too or something, because it yeah, looks like you know what I mean? That would have been a, better. A random Venus flytrap's just a bit odd. But um yeah, it's the it's the fact that it's poison ivy in it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's no choice, but, um, oh, yeah. Those are all the random talking, little pickups. While we're talking about um Diamond Select, let's give them a little mm. shout out. Diamond Select, we love you. Um big fans of Diamond Select. Um we've worked closely with them for a couple of years now. Um the turtle diorama that they that yeah. I'm building up. So it's four pieces, four pieces all together. Um, Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael. Donatello's <laughs> not out yet. And during my video, my review video of the other three, or my unboxing video of the other three, I did mm. say that I was a little bit disappointed because from the promo art, it looks like Donatello faces outwards. So you've essentially got the four turtles kind of facing In out. In the four corners. The yeah. Um, and they reached out to me and said, no, it's been designed and um, they released promo work, uh, promo, uh, not promo work. So they released packaging artwork of the figure now. So it's obviously coming out very soon and they've either switched it from the original promo work or mm. they hadn't made it very clear, but it's not, you can have him so that he's either facing outwards so that you it's, if you have him in a line, but you can also switch it around. So he's facing inwards, if that makes sense. So mm. if you've got them like in a, in a square facing, it looks like they're all going the same way. So I'm really, really excited to pick up that Donatello. Um, another thing about Diamond Select at the moment is they are celebrating their 25th anniversary. Have you seen this on yeah. Instagram? Yeah. So they are doing a photo competition. They've got three categories. Um, and they, off the top of my head, I think it's a uh, single character, team shot, and like lighting effect. Mm. Um, so they're like the three character categories. You can use any of the Diamond Select figures, mini mates, whatever it is that they've released. You can use that. Take a picture of it. Send it in. There's a little. There's a little, there's a link on their Instagram page. You send it in, and they're going to select a handful of winners next Friday. I think it is. Yeah. Um, and I believe the prizes are pretty good. They're kind of like two action figures, in stock action figures, or one. <laughs> gentle giant diorama thing and like there's some good prizes up for grabs so do head over to diamond selects instagram page check out the details and send them in and they're kind of reposting a load of different entries as well um and yeah they're, they're not they're not looking for professional photographers they're looking for people that take good photos of their products it's a it's a community competition so 
yeah, grab your iPhone, grab your Samsung, your Android, whatever. Take some pictures. If you've got a camera, use your camera. Um, and they are allowing some editing as well. So you can use some Photoshop as well if you if that's the the the, the form of media you prefer to use. So yeah, little shout out for Diamond Select's competition. Go bag yourself some Diamond Select goodies. Pretty cool. Nice one. Uh well while, while we're on the subject of UK toys as well, so like like you like like UK news and stuff of what's in stock, I do have a couple of other quick things just tell everyone that game are now stocking the x-men 97 wave and they're also stocking the spider-man wave as well um with all wave with Hallow's one or and stuff. wave two which one have they got hello the one with hallows eve in it and no the uh what, the motorcycle spider-man uh it's the wave with uh green uh red what's she called goblin Manning lady Park. yeah wave two so the wave two one. yeah cool. are they doing them at reduced or are they 24.99 so it's the same as Smith. Standard it's price. The same as most of your places, but it's Smiths another place. aren't stocking them though in my area. They've only got Cyclops in. They've only got Cyclops in mine as well. That's Weird. that's literally the only. It is a bizarre move. Like I'm, but to to be fair, in Smith's defence, and I don't know if this is legitimately why, but there's not many characters in that wave that are general kind of Joe public. Yeah. Like you know what I mean, like Jean Grey. <laughs> Cyclops, Magneto, um, and Nightcrawler, I mm. suppose could potentially, you know, persuade the, the general public, but Executioner and Goblin Queen, they're not necessarily mm. ones that are going to appeal to people that aren't fans of the show. I get on with the manager at my local store um, because obviously I film and stuff there, so the question me what the hell I'm doing as a guy's walking around with a camera. And then... <laughs> So like I I've I've got talking to him over the years and stuff and he he was he was saying that since they've been open because they're they're a relatively new store since they've been open they can count he said he can count on one hand how many Hasbro deliveries have turned up so it's not that it's either some it's either the people at HQ are, are deciding that Hasbro products aren't selling so they're not releasing them but he said like even Transformers now is coming through very reduced whereas they had a massive Transformers section. And they yeah. seem to have like reduced them all right down to get rid of them, and then they've just not restocked. So I'm not sure whether it's because Hasbro isn't selling in stores now, or but they they've just not had deliveries in such a long time for the Hasbro product. Um, they've still got the kids stuff in, like they've got you know Captain America shield that fires the little Nerf pellets, yeah. and they've got all that stuff in, and like your Groot products and things. But when it comes to like the Legends and things and the collector's stuff, they're just not getting them in. No, uh, the Black Series collection at mine was really thin. Uh, mm. really really thin so they had like again same with the cyclops thing my store has a little black series section but they don't stock any characters that a kid wouldn't want so like they've got a, they've got the new darth vader on the shelf and they've got like the um the uh, the archive version of luke skywalker so they've yep. got like they've got they're choosing like key characters almost and not selling the rest of the waves and i think that's because hasbro distribution does now send them out as full cases don't they once yeah. upon a time they used to send them out as mixed so like stores were forced to have the the shelf peggers. Nowadays you can buy just a shell, a whole case of Vaders, a whole case of Lukes. So that's probably what they're doing, you know. Like they probably bought a case of Cyclops. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Um, I've just had a quick quick look, and <coughs> yeah, I might have to go and get Ken. Is <laughs> <laughs> he in stock? Yeah, but very limited. Ooh, yeah. get him. Do the do the thingy. Buy it and then pick it up tomorrow. Do the layaway thingy. That's what I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah, but it... Well, while you're doing that, um, Hasbro have announced Isn't that the Marvel... <laughs> <laughs> Hasbro have announced that they're doing the Marvel Legends stream on the 15th. Um, yeah. So that's tomorrow. So we'll see what comes out of that. Um, I don't know what they're going to announce at that, to be honest. I think... Here's my prediction. I think it's going to be Carnage. They've announced okay. that, but we haven't had a, like, a date show, on yeah. it or anything like that. Um. Mm. Yeah, I I think that maybe I I I would like to say Deadpool because obviously Deadpool's coming soon. But I think Dan tweeted something about not MCU stuff. Okay, I'm really surprised that you know, like once upon a time when Deadpool first came out and they didn't have the rights, they just released a load of comic book Deadpool, like a comic Deadpool wave, and it sold really well. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> I'm honestly surprised that because of the whole. They knew that they weren't going to be getting them out on time. I'm surprised that they didn't just make an anim like an animated wave of Deadpool stuff from the comics 
to to yeah. release alongside the movie and then release the movie figures later. I'd, yeah, I'm surely that would have been a very tactical move, but obviously not. You would think so, wouldn't you? Mm. Because then they can say, "Oh yeah, it's, there's 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 no MCU stuff coming," and then we all we're all pleasantly surprised when it's all Deadpool stuff, but it's just comic book Deadpool. Yeah, I just <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know whether there's a bigger plan because it's not it, it's not even Marvel Legends. Like there hasn't been much Deadpool merch. Like it's all like nothing's out yet. Mm. And that's so... a nice little segue, Jacob. Well done there. CinemaCon's been a, been this weekend as well. <laughs> Yep, hang on. And sorry, is it is it is it going? Is is your payment going through? And there's one less, and there's one less Ken in that Smiths now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> right, okay. Where were we? <laughs> so yeah, it was CinemaCon this weekend, and uh, Kevin Feige took took the stage and was talking about Deadpool. Yeah, and they showed they showed them a nine minute feature from the movie nine minutes so some yeah. people are like journalists have had a right viewing this weekend um this was a a, a, a usual thing that, ha that happens in las vegas it's a big a big event and there's been a lot of stuff announced but kevin feige said obviously they made a bit of a joke about the dune popcorn bucket saying yeah. that it were a bit rude and <clears throat> and basically saying that you know that uh, they got, they've basically asked Deadpool to create his own popcorn bucket. <laughs> well, I, is this a genuine thing? Like, is he gonna? Is there gonna be a popcorn bucket with it? Oh, have you not seen it yet? No. Let, is it let me grab a picture. His mouth. Or it, I saw that. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. See, so I basically, there's there's a couple. Joke. No, there's a there's a couple of things they've they've kind of um, released um let me see if i can find the photos yeah they're, they're aiming to outdo um the dunes pop popcorn bucket with basically it's a deadpool popcorn bucket and a wolverine popcorn bucket right, and okay. you can put the popcorn in the top and eat it out as normal but there's a little screw <laughs> on the front where their mouth would be so like there's like a little like a henry hoover little nozzle that you can remove and uh, cool. yeah, the po the popcorn kind of spills out of it. That I'm trying to find cool. the photos. I'm trying to find the photos, but I can't get them. Uh, but there's oh, wait, there's one here, but it's got a random dude's face on it. Um, but yeah, there's they've announced the, they've, they've they've announced a couple of things. Um, you can get like a there's a Deadpool drinking cup. We probably won't get that in England. There's a Wolverine topper for a drink thing, and then there's the regular like red metal uh, bucket. That is awful. That really is awful. But yeah, they the the releasing. Oh, here we go. I've got it. I've got it. I've got a picture. Hang on. Here we go. I'm just trying to find. This it. was the this was the mock up that was designed by Deadpool supposedly. But again, we probably won't get these in England, which is the sad thing. No, we don't really get them. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, they're just trying to outdo the Dune one. Yeah. But yeah. That's awful. That That's got awful. announced at CinemaCon. <laughs> so they, they announced all that, and then they showed them the, the nine-minute new trailer for the uh, for the movie. That is awful. That's <laughs> the only the only information I've seen about the trailer is, uh, about Deadpool is that there was a like a breakdown of like a don't use your phone thing. Did you see that? No. Where like Ryan Reynolds is talking to the he talks about something along the lines of um how did they put it like oh they've just announced that secret wars is going to feature and then wolverine pushes him out of the way and he's like effing and blinding and saying like put your effing phone away and all this kind of stuff and yeah. then deadpool comes back in and goes oh like nice full fall break like you know hearing you talk like that made me made, made my what's it's tingle and all this kind of stuff <laughs> i don't know about how legitimate that is because obviously everything is just written and there's mm. no kind of genuine stuff like i don't i don't know if it's true or not but yeah I, i'm just surprised that no one's given us a, a breakdown or anything because they're not allowed to they had to surrender the phones before they went in and um, there's a lot of it's like all the big companies like screen run and empire and they're not gonna risk releasing secrets and then never getting invited back to these things no. so we'll find out in a, in a week or so when the, when the next trailer drops yeah 
Um, but um, did you see the uh, fam- F- Famke Jensen uh, pr- pr- protested a bit too much this week? No. So she was asked, you know, are you in the new Deadpool movie? And she was, she was like on a on a chat oh, show, yeah. basically going, saying, "No, I'm not in it. I'm definitely not. I'm, I've, I've not been asked. I'm really not in it." And she was like rambling for like a good minute, like yeah. she was trying to stammer an answer out. And she's yeah. like the worst liar on the planet. <laughs> yeah. So that's either <laughs> she's, she's definitely in it. <laughs> she's either well annoyed and just got to the end of her tether, or she's not an Andrew Garfield cover up. Like, like, you know. Oh, I think I think it's guaranteed that her and James Marsden are going to have at least a walk on role. Come on, it's Cyclops and Jean Grey, and it's Deadpool. They're going to be in it. Yeah, it's got to be. I doubt they would bring back Sophie Turner. Is she called Sophie Turner? I doubt they would bring her back, would they? And the new new one. That's what I mean. I doubt they would bring them because they're not. That isn't iconic enough. She's a well-known actress, but that wouldn't be funny. Whereas having James Marsden walk past or something would be. Along yeah. with her, you know, with her in arms. And, and he's stuff. quite a funny guy. Like, he's quite mm-hmm. comedic does, anyway. Yeah. So I can imagine he would do that. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's, oh, I just, I just want a trailer. I really <laughs> want a trailer now. Like, I'm just at that stage where I'm like, just give us a trailer. Mm. Like, every time Ryan Reynolds pops up, it's <laughs> like, but he's obviously got that imaginary friends film that mm. is coming out next week or something. Yeah. It's coming out very soon, isn't it? It is. Um, and a lot of the marketing is all about that. And I can understand why nothing's been pushed about Deadpool yet. Because if I'm honest, is... though, I'm happy that we're not seeing a lot of it. Because the thing yeah. was, and we, we've mentioned this before, like when, when Civil War was coming out, we were all excited for Spider-Man. And then they gave us it on a trailer. Yeah. And I, was, I always said I wished I, I waited until I was in the cinema with my popcorn, big screen, yeah. to see that first Hey guys, you know, the Spider-Man just popping his head open. Yeah. That should have been a big screen moment. It should have been the big pop of the cinema. But we we got it on a trailer. That's you like that's like I giving Andrew that. Garfield on a trailer. You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought about this the other day, funny enough, and they could have just given us, you know, when he like webs Captain America's shield, mm. they could have just given us that in the trailer yeah. and not show him off. That would have been enough. Like that would have been a real kind of oh my, like yeah, this is amazing. But yeah. <laughs> And again, they could do a similar thing with Deadpool. All they would need to do is just have like Cyclops' eye beam, the, the, the red yeah. hit him or something, and he'd go, oh, he's, he's here. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all they would yeah. need, and everyone would know what that meant. Yeah, I think the right, problem is nowadays is that you get a trailer, you get people, you get a teaser trailer, you get people review the teaser trailer, you get a yeah. trailer, you get people review the trailer, you get people break it down, you get people assess it. You, like, and there's so much for every single thing it doesn't leave any room for surprise like everyone speculates and i think that the the teaser that we got so far was enough and if yeah. they don't give us i said this about spider-man like if they don't give us anything else now until the film i wouldn't be mad i really wouldn't be mad but, yeah 100 percent. yeah and um other than other than deadpool we had so much more news to get through so i mean the tmmt was a big one so Paramount have announced that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are making a live action movie. It's going to be R rated. So it's a, it's for adults. It's not for kids. It's separated mm-hmm. from the current animated stuff they're doing. And it's the last Ronin, the movie. Yeah. And they haven't that. yet. There was a, it, all the, they basically gave us the, just the idea. This is what they're doing. They've not mentioned whether the turtles are going to be suits, CG. We don't know. Um, but yeah, it's it's the last Ronan movie. I'm so excited for that. It's one of the best Turtles comics of the last ten years. I'm really hyped, especially as I just got the comic at Christmas. <laughs> I'm just like it's fresh in my mind. But you know what? It kind of brings me into a point that I've been sort of thinking about a lot this week. Everything nowadays is bigger picture, bigger universe, link to this, link to that, or something comes out and it's like, you know what, this is great, so we're going to follow it up with this and expand the universe. The expanded universe works for superheroes. It works for Marvel, it works for DC, because they take their their stuff, Come the content that they, they create is based on comic books, and comic mm. books have been doing that for, for years, you know, like a big extended universe where everyone knows everyone. It doesn't need to happen in other films. No. So for them to do a last Ronan film and it not to be linked to any of the stuff that's going on now, for it not to be linked to 
any of the films we got in like the what in the nineties or whatever they were. Yeah. Um, for it to just be a standalone last Ronin, this is the film. Doesn't lead on to anything else, doesn't follow from from anything else. It is just a standalone film that you can go in, you can enjoy, you can watch, you can watch again, you know. That's that's that excites me. And I think with the last Ronin they can kind of do that. I know that there's more storybooks that came afterwards so they could potentially do another film afterwards but to just do a standalone film based on that mm. anthology <laughs> would be really good yeah and it's 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 the fact that it was written by you know the two original writers you know kevin eastman and peter lad peter lad um eastman lad yeah, yeah so it's, it's been written by it was written by them which they you know made, made the original comic book so yeah. it was all them years later they came back to write this so it's it's a it's a perfect turtle story and if you've not read it people please pick up the the, the, the you know the comic it's amazing yeah you can get it on amazon for like 20 quid a hard mm -hmm. but i got i got it on amazon for 20 quid yeah, I got hard hard um i hadn't read it it was one of the things that at christmas i was like oh grab me that because i do need to read it and it's awesome i'm reading it really slowly but i haven't read a proper kind of story arc back-to-back -back comic since i finished walking dead and that was like it was like a pile of, <laughs> a pile of like graphic novels like See, this but yeah once you've read it then you need to go get the graphic novel of the lost years you know there's that section in the beginning where he's in yeah. uh, japan training there's that whole comic book about that that adapts that a bit further that's pretty cool while we're talking about turtles and movies though let's just segue back to smiths because mm. they got a particular line of figures in didn't they yeah they did and i saw these in hand what were you, what were your thoughts you can tell mine because i'm laughing <laughs> the 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 weird squishy turtles with the black spots all over them yeah yeah they're a bit odd the original ones cool. though, in the 90s were a bit odd as well though yeah they're, they're a recreation of the original ones we had as kids that's why they look now because they're just recreations of them yeah so they basically they're on the the turtles retro card kind of back and it's like you know ninja turtles at the movies and they've basically given us the four turtles from the movies yeah but in the kind of five inch limited articulation figures and they just i don't remember the ones being like they look like the plastics melting like it's all bobbly and there's black spots all over them and mm. they just look hideous like they do um i had i only had one of those as a kid i had michelangelo um but i remember playing with that figure a lot as a kid because it it sounds weird because but it felt like a turtle you know what i mean it like it yeah. had the squishy skin yeah that that's kind of how you always thought a turtle would feel if you squished them you know what i mean Do these ones have squishy skin then yeah it's the same i believe so i believe i've not i've not got one so i don't know but i'm gonna get if the originals were i'm guessing these ones will be oh uh, okay because they're, they're a recreation of the original one so they are like a soft it's like a rubbery vinyl -y material that gives them that like shiny weird feeling there are certain things from when you know, i was a bit like a bit like street sharks me. like how street yeah. sharks felt there are certain certain figures that from my childhood that i don't need to repurchase <laughs> the movie turtle yeah. no i got the NECA ones the NECA ones will do they look <laughs> they look good but, but yeah. the thing is you might need them because when the second wave hits that's tokar and razor Mm, nah, um, no. they they've got because <laughs> I mean every time I every time I see every time I see a Tokar and Razor I'm like I I love them just because mm. I just I just instantly revert back to being a child and hearing babies you've given me babies the uh, the rock steady and bebop that just wasn't <laughs> like you know it's like, we need to give them a, a bebop and rock steady but we can't give them bebop and rock steady so let's just create these new characters um but going back to movies and of course kind of sticking with smiths as well in a weird kind of way smiths have got a, a ton of five nights of freddy's stuff oh. like they're they i think the, the five nights at freddy's section at my smiths is probably bigger than the black series yeah um, i'm not sure how your smith is laid out but mine has like got all the like like all the um like what are they called? are they called good friends or something from roblox the rainbow friends they've got yeah, like yeah, them yeah. they've got lanky box they've got doors they've got literally all of like the, the pet simulator they're all together yeah. all yeah, the yeah. youtuber stuff is like all together in a corner of the store and it yeah. takes up an entire wall in mine now yeah, yeah mine mine too it's it's all your rainbow friends your your well, um well you're it's a good time and all that kind of stuff <laughs> you know what you know i had 
a, a box in the corner of my room that was full of that stuff. And it was yeah. like a yellow cardboard box. I had to upgrade the box this weekend. Wow. It's gotten it bigger. <laughs> I'm going to need a bigger box. Wow. Okay, yeah, that's that's much bigger. It's a blue box now. <laughs> a big blue box. It's a big it's a big stacker box now. It started off as a cardboard box this big and then I've just had to get bigger and bigger boxes because I've got that much stuff. I'm going to I'm going to upset you a little bit here. But yeah? you know those big black trunks that you get with like the yellow clips that are kind of yeah. like the garage stuff. Yeah, so I've got two of those in my room full of stuff mm. that needs to be opened and nice. <laughs> I was just like, well I'm preparing for a move anyway, so I'm kind of boxing stuff up. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to I've got a couple of them for work. So I had a couple that hadn't weren't being used and I was like, yeah, I'm going to put my unboxed figures in there. And um it's ready to move, but I'm now kind of cracking into them and working my way through it. Um but talking about Five Fig Nights at Freddy's. Mm. There was another a little Five Nights at Freddy's drop, wasn't there, at CinemaCon? Yeah, I was just going to say as well, FigureFan36 is just asking in the comments, is the FNAF series worth collect collecting? <clears throat> I've collected a mixture of the merch from the mystery minis to the tiny figures to the big figures to the plushies to... I've kind of done a bit of everything on my channel. I've, I've been I've been collecting Five Nights since it first like launched in Toys R Us all the years ago. Yeah. Um, and... As cool as the Funko action figures are, they're really hit and miss as to when they get them in stock. So the best thing to collect, I think personally, because they're all available right now at Smith's, every single one of them, and it's the uh, Snaps co co collection. Because with the snaps, you also get the play sets and they're all to scale with the figures. So you can have like the original Five Nights at Freddy's, you know, crew in the like the in in the in the, the in the pizzeria room. Or you can even build the the big pizza plex from the uh, security breach games and have all the security breach characters. So it's a it's a complete like world building rather than just co like figure collecting. And they're really reasonably priced. Like the play sets are only like between fifteen and twenty quid, and the figures yeah. are like all reduced to like seven or eight quid now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they are good figures. They they I like the snaps. It's it's very kind of eighties nineties to have figures that. Yeah swap out parts yeah i like the fact they're all interchangeable and i've yeah. done loads of videos on them that's that's a very cool concept but yes they announced that but there yeah. is a five nights at freddy 2 coming yes a blumhouse tweeted out five nights at two confirmed it will be happening um no other real big news yet on it but just five nights two is confirmed for a movie do you think that means we are going to get a sequel to <laughs> willie's wonderland or whatever it was called <laughs> what was that what no. was that cage one yeah, Willy's Wonderland. It was, wasn't it? I, yeah. Mate, they might. <laughs> they I might think we'll get a dodgy that. comic book in about a year's time where it'll be FNAF versus Willy's Wonderland. That's what'll yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah. But um, nah, it could happen, but I doubt it. I think I think Blumhouse would have something to say now. Yeah. <laughs> I I really like it. I really like the Willy's Wonderland and Winter Wonderland it's fun. one. It's a fun film. And I think I, I think I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed the Five Nights at Freddy just because I knew what was coming with five nights at freddy's i think if they're smart they wouldn't make a direct not a direct sequel because the five nights at freddy's one two and three and even four is kind of all um it's all set in that same pizzeria it's the same five animatronics doing the same things they've done throughout the last movie mm. so we've already had that movie we've already had the villain exposed and he's now dead and he's like all been you know he's, he's, he got killed in the spring trap suit and he saved the day so we don't need to really linger on that and the kind of you know showed off his daughter to be a bit of a she's going to be you know later on she's going to become gl glitch trap and so i think if they're smart they the second movie will be based on sister location which was the next game after the first three right, so we'll okay. get we'll get sister location which will then it'll keep it keeps Freddy and the gang in there, but they're different versions of them. They're like it's like Freddy in white with pink cheeks, and it's like a fun time Freddy. And they call it's called like Fun Time Foxy, uh, Fun Time Freddy. Um, and then they're all like cute, like cute, cutesy versions of themselves. And Ballora is like a ballerina, and she's like the main villain in that one. So it'd be cool to get the next sort like line of animatronics in that film, and then mm. they could keep going with that same style because the film after that could then be the the brand new security breach movie 
Yeah. And it would it would it would be a way of keeping the timeline moving without it getting stagnant because I think that yeah. film franchise could get stagnant real quick. Yeah. No. Fair enough. Right. Let's get through the rest of Cinema Con very quickly because there's a couple of other big things <clears throat> we need to talk about. Um, yeah, Gladiator Two uh, trailer yeah. was shown as well at CinemaCon, and it was met with a lot of good comments about it. It's not been released to the public yet, but um, everyone's saying it's really good. That one will come soon. That will come soon. Gladiator mm. is a film that deserves a sequel, I think. Yeah. Um, and to be fair, after the after the success of like Spartacus and Gods of the Arena and all that, I've, yeah, it'll it'll do well just being a gladiatorial film. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. <clears throat> Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. So um, we all know Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse fell into public domain a little while ago. Yep. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit has been in public domain for a little while now because he came before Mickey. And everyone, yeah, well, I'm not sure if everyone does know, I'm a diehard Disney fan, so Oswald was Walt's original creation before he made the Disney company. And when, yeah. he, when he left, I think it was Universal Pictures, they wouldn't allow him to take Oswald with him. They kind of said, no, that's our character. So he um basically was forced to leave oswald behind and then he created mickey and then mickey became his iconic character mm -hmm. they made a game a little while back a few well, a good few years ago now called um epic mickey which pitted like mickey against oswald and then in the second film in the second game they became friends and it was about because oswald was forgotten and mickey became this big star and oswald should have been the big star so they're making the Oswald the Lucky Rabbit movie and the people that are making Steamboat Willie have already reached out to them and said, we need a crossover. So after Oswald, there's going to be an Oswald versus Mickey, you know, Oswald versus Steamboat Willie, the two black and white characters in the real world going at it. That's mad. So that, that is, is mad. madness. I can imagine Disney are just like, what is going on right now? Yeah. <laughs> that, their lawyers must be all over this. It's, I would not want to be a Disney lawyer right now. Um, <laughs> And of course, as well, Transformers 1 cast was announced as well. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Yeah, it's, it is what it is. But oh, it is, it's, not Pete, it's not Peter Cullen. I'm still here. Yeah, it's not Peter Cullen, though, is it? Like, Who is it doing the, the voice? <laughs> Chris Hemsworth is Optimus Prime. I just can't see it. No, I can't see any of them. So <laughs> the announcements are horrible. So Chris Hemsworth is is going to voice Optimus Prime. Right. Then we've got Scarlett Johansson as Alita, uh, Lawrence Fishburne as Alpha Trion, um, John Hamm will be Sentinel Prime, uh, Keegan Michael K will be Bumblebee. <laughs> Just, it's just why have they done this? Steve Buscemi's in there. It's just a who's who of Hollywood that haven't worked in a while. I just don't. I, I don't get Chris Hemsworth as Optimus Prime. I just don't. And like, they haven't even told us who Steve Buscemi's playing. But if if he's play, if he's voicing Megatron or something, <laughs> yeah. Can imagine that voice coming out of Megatron. No. <laughs> no. No. I'm, as soon as they as soon as I saw the announcement and I saw the words Chris Hemsworth as Optimus Prime, like no. I just I get it that they're probably looking for somebody a bit younger to kind of take on the mantle so that they can kind of carry it on. But it, the only way it's going to work is if they up. say that the Transformers have gone through some form of change and that's why the voices have changed and the 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 All Spark did something to bring them back or you know what I mean. Yeah. They've got to be a re reimagined, revolved version. They can't just go from the Michael Bay version to that. That's just jarring. No. No, it just wouldn't work. Um, <laughs> talking about trailers, though, let's talk about the Joker trailer. Let's. let's oh focus God, on that yes, that was that was a masterpiece of a trailer. I, you know what though, what's really surprised me is there are serious splits on mm. the internet of people loving it or hating it. Um, now, obviously, it is penned as a musical, but I. I me I, i'm holding my i'm not like people are criticizing it they're slamming it but until i see it i'm i'm not passing judgment because i so, think it will really work I'd... yeah from from the trailer i don't think it's a musical in the respect of a you know <clears throat> cats or joseph or whatever it's not going to be one of those kind of musicals i think what they mean is the music is in the movie and that takes a big part of the movie but i think it's like just no, audio said, tracks that they're, they're dancing and singing to no, yeah 
they they they've yeah it's not going to be musical as in like they yeah but they are singing they, they the two lead characters are singing yeah a handful of like known songs and stuff like it's mm. but i think it's all going to be made up to like the whole thing is like a psychosis in his head so yeah why would he not sing like it yeah i i, I think it's going to be incredible I, I think it's going to be from that trailer there was some absolutely beautiful shots in that trailer mm-hmm. like even just the one of him just laughing manically like in the rain just just got me one of them dancing on the rooftop was brilliant. Like it, it's just, I just think it looks incredible. Yeah, uh, that, one thing they didn't. Re- the, see, I'm not cause like they do that thing with with trailers, don't they? To kind of make you keep guessing, and they don't want to give you the story or like all complete and whatever. Yeah. So I'm wondering whether because like. Harley Quinn's obviously a psychiatrist and she looks after Joker, but they kind of made her almost look like she was in prison herself. Yeah. So I'm wondering how that's like, is she actually in prison? Is she an inmate? Cause she's not wearing like, she's not wearing the, like the garb that the rest of them are wearing. She's not wearing the jumpsuits or anything. No, she's in her own clothes most of the time. So I think she is still a, like a, um, one of the a, like psychiatrists of the ward or something. Yeah, I I agree. I I think that she's going to be, she's going to, I think the whole thing, I think what we said last week or the week before is probably Mm. a good shot at the synopsis. And I think that it's it's very much, we're going to see both of their kind of daydreams. They're going to, they're going to obviously see each other in their story. Their their paths are going to cross and we're going to see two different versions of their kind of daydream about the other person. And then that's going to come full circle and something's going to happen at the end for them to actually become a pair. That's, that's mm. my guess where, and that, I think that's where the musical element could come from it because they will be essentially romanticizing a love story in their head, but from yeah. their individual perspectives, that's, that's how I think it's going to work. <clears throat> and I love the musical, so I'm, I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, no, I, I love a good musical. I love a good musical as well. I'm I'm a geek for musicals. Um, but yeah, they the showed like the scene where there's the you know the the where she's dancing down the stairs with him mm. from like 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 similar to the first film. Yeah, and um, they all they also showed her in her actual Harley look as well, didn't they? Did you, did you catch that? Where she's got the black yeah, lines down her face, yeah. and she's wearing the red, and she's got a corset underneath, which is the black and white checkered. Yeah, so that is one of Harley's many a comic book looks yeah um but obviously this is a more grounded movie so we're not we're not going to get her in a clown like a full-on harley quinn clown would jump jumpsuit i don't think yeah. uh, i think we'd, we'd get more of one of the modern looks of harley rather than anything else i think so um before we uh, going on to other stuff you've got rebel moon as well the second part of rebel moon comes out on friday yeah Guess where I was meant to go on Tuesday? Where? To the premiere. Oh, nice. And I can't go. Oh. I'm so annoyed. Yeah, I was supposed to be going to the premiere. Premiere. Um, on Tuesday. Um, which included like a an immersive like VR experience. <laughs> and um, I believe there was VIP guests, but I had heard that Zack Snyder's gonna be there. Oh um, man that there's like a after after the film they provide transport and take us to like a, a food and drinks and entertainment like after party with all this kind of like immersive stuff and everything it's an absolutely incredible night and i can't go <laughs> you I'm, need to go I'm, what do you mean you can't, can't go make can't. it work I'll see why and it's just reminding me because of musicals because my my wife and my two <laughs> eldest are involved in a musical mm. at the moment and their opening night is on Tuesday. Oh, so they're there. My in-laws are there. Obviously, I've got the other kids and that, and I just couldn't make it work. And I was like, you know what? Some things just aren't meant to be. And I was like, oh, I'm so good. But it does come out on Friday. So obviously, by the time we talk next week, we'll also be able to talk about mm. Rebel Moon Part 2. Mm. Um, One thing that did catch my eye this week, mate, I'm going to be honest, Blumhouse. Yep are going to recreate the Blair Witch. They've got the rights to make the Blair Witch. I heard this. 
I heard this. This was one of the um, later announcements. So, like, we had CinemaCon, and then randomly Blumhouse blurted this out on all of our social media. Yeah. So I'm not sure whether it, the new whether they didn't have it finalized, ready for you know CinemaCon. But um, yeah, Blair Witch. They're gonna they're gonna they want to re- not not they're not gonna change a lot of it. They said, but they're gonna reimagine it for a new generation. So they're gonna modernize it, basically. You know what? This could work. This mm. really could work. We need since kind of found footage became a thing which was originally with Blair Witch wasn't it Blair Witch kind of started mm-hmm. that ball rolling and then since then we've had like absolutely thousands. hundreds and thousands of found footage things and apart from a couple like your paranormal activities that kind of hit big at the box office and stuff like that most of them kind of stay mid range don't they mm-hmm. and i think that the generations now have kind of become a bit desensitized to the found footage aspect of theater whereas obviously for us where mobile phones in your pockets i mean blair which was before that it was camcorders and stuff wasn't it but yeah it it was very kind of real and it was spooky and it was scary whereas then with phones coming out and all that kind of stuff it, it made all of that stuff a lot more desensitized and i think if anyone could reimagine in it for a new generation and make it scary it's Blumhouse. I, th- I think they've got the capacity to do it. Yeah. Well, Blumhouse obviously um, took a lot of inspiration from Blair Witch when they made Paranormal Activity. So exactly. it's the fact, because they made Paranormal Activity. So, I mean, it's the fact that they're going back to their roots with the found footage thing. Hmm. But if they're going to modernize it for a modern day audience, you may, remember when the original film came out, they made up the fake website. They tried to make it look as real as possible. I believe it, it. I believe yeah, it was yeah. a real thing. Like, I really did at the time. So imagine what they could do with modern day apps and things like that yeah. and phones and YouTube the, and things like the that. They could bit, the best bit of marketing for that original film. They did all the fake websites and stuff, which obviously I stumbled across, mm-hmm. but they actually did like a documentary as well, like a, mm-hmm. a documentary on the, there was a particular story in Blair Witch that they made a documentary about. And I watched it like fully engaged, believing this thing was real. But <laughs> when I first saw that it was being modernized and I thought very much, it, it, if they do it very much along the kind of live streaming and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff aspect, it could be really good. That's why I'm thinking it'll be a bunch of viral vloggers in the forest with phones. Yeah. And it, it, cause Im, imagine that they're filming it as if you're the, as if it, like there's, there's going to be, there's got to be a scene where someone's got a phone up like that. And they're looking at the screen and the blur like something appears on the screen and makes mm. you jump because that 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 would be the ultimate jump scare yeah for a modern day audience that is glued to their phones something like that would be the ultimate jump scare wouldn't yeah. it yeah it, it's it has to be cleverly written like the the mm-hmm. bones of the story are there and yeah i just like i really liked the the re re-release i really liked the second version like when they redid it because it was kind of fresh but I didn't like Blair Witch 2. That was a little bit too out there for me. Mm. But, <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I just think that there's a lot of capacity for it to be good if they do it correctly. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And um, as well, Abigail, re- the reviews have started coming out for Abigail. Yes. Uh, this is the Dracula's Daughter recreation that's coming out. Um, again, it's by the people that made Ready or Not. You know the bride being hunted by the rest of the family. Yeah. It's yeah. by the same people that made that, and obviously a lot, a lot of people are drawing similar things because obviously the the, the the first film that company ever made was Ready or Not, which is about the bride being hunted by the the groom's family after mm. the wedding. This time around, it's um, you know the monster chasing the the people in the house. So it's the mm. same sort of film, just kind of reversed. <laughs> and both were set in like a big mansion and things like that. So it's a very similar movie. Um, so people, a lot, a lot of people are drawing similarities to that, but. A lot of people have the, the, all the all the reviews I've seen is like I mean Rotten Tomatoes has got it like eighty odd percent you know fresh rating, and a lot of people are saying it's a um, a good like a good fun movie uh, full of blood and gore. So mm. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to go see it this Friday. I'm really excited for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good film. It's going to be a good film. But, I, um, I I do want to go and see it. Yeah, it's going to be good. That one. I'm excited for it. Let's talk X Men or Fallout. Oh, Which one do you want to talk about? X Men. Okay. All right. So, for anyone that hasn't seen it, but 
yeah, we're going to talk X Men ninety seven episode five. A lot of people have seen it. If you haven't seen it, cover your ears. But Meh. yeah, it, it took it hit me sideways. I did not expect that level of emotion in an episode of X Men. Yep. Um. I so I got a. I watched well I was what I was watching it and I got a message from Mick who was right. one of our viewers basically saying have you guys watched it yet in the group chat that I'm in with him uh, and everyone's like nope 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 I'm like dude I'll message it because <laughs> Mick is a big Gambit fanboy a bit like mm. me and that ending oh my god I the, <clears throat> the bit with Magneto and Rogue, uh, Rogue where they're they're dancing and they're like kissing and stuff like that. Like my wife goes to me, "What? What are you watching?" <laughs> like it's a grown-up cartoon. It's all right. So it's a grown. It's a grown-up animation. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just Gambit was the star of the show for me. Like he mm -hmm. stole the show. Because if you watch it from Gambit's perspective, it's quite a um, it's quite an arc for him. You know the whole kind of rogue and magneto and all that kind of stuff i was not expecting like i i still don't believe they've killed him off like no i don't not, i don't that's not um but there depends where they go with it because obviously there's the whole storyline in um the comic books where he becomes deaf um where he's rebuilt by apocalypse and stuff there's there's so that's much the, potential that's the one i am thinking yeah i'm thinking apocalypse and he's gonna get rebuilt because they're gonna turn him into evil gambit for a while and then the love of rogue is gonna turn him back because that's how so? cheesy that well that's how cheesy that cartoon is come on that's we're gonna yeah. get it basically when she's getting off with magneto she's broke his heart he's died and now she's realized oh my god i love him so now we need him to come back all sparkly and new so it's gonna go full circle in it and then they're gonna fall out with magneto by the end of this whole cartoon <laughs> but talking about talking about rogue though like magneto's died as well mm. like both of those guys died in that episode like from what mm. we're led to believe both of them died. and magneto took leech with him as well like that's <laughs> And both of them happen in the comics to both be different versions of Apocalypse as Four Horsemen. So, yeah, uh, Magneto was a four, was, <laughs> was one of the Four Horsemen, and so was Gambit. <laughs> yeah, um, Northern they Nomad could they the... could do Apocalypse and do the do that and bring them back that way. <clears throat> well, they don't. They, 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 there hasn't been any hint on Apocalypse yet. Like it's all been sinister, hasn't it? Or like Northern Nomad just says, and yeah, Cable will just change time for us because they've, they've they've sent the baby into back into time, so he can reappear at a fully grown ass adult at any point he wants now. So they yeah. could just basically bring Cable into it and revert time and bring Gambit back and, and <clears throat> Magneto. And we obviously saw a a very very quick cameo of Cable where he came back to Madeline and said, like you know, he's coming, get out of here, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to intervene with it a little bit. But I don't know. I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if they'll cheap out and just make it like a, oh, okay, we'll reverse the timeline. Like, I, I think that their writers are cleverer than that. Mm -hmm. I think that they will look at how to move the story forward as opposed to just reverse it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a heavy one for Rogue. It was a heavy one for Rogue. I just... <laughs> That ending with Gambit, though, that was like yeah, talk about that was the good wrench, wasn't it? Like, <clears throat> but the the way that he, like, uh, as soon as the the tentacle that was like in him like started powering up, I was like, dude, <laughs> like, dude. But I didn't even think about him dying because I'm watching X Men '97. Like, why people don't die? Morph died in episode one. That was it. Like, <laughs> they don't kill anyone else after that. But. Yeah. Have you noticed that as well, the severe lack of Wolverine? Mm -hmm. Like Wolverine is not featured heavily in this series at all. Because Carl Dodd's old and can't do the voice anymore. <laughs> I, you know what, though? Aside from that, it really shows you how messed up the movies have been. 
because the mm. movies are all focused on Wolverine's story. Like Wolverine has been in front and center of all of those films, with with the exception of like First Class and all the rest of it. But it just shows how how much of a story they could give the other characters, the other members of of X Men. Like, can you imagine the whole Madeline and and Jean kind of as a storyline, or oh, yeah. you know, something along the lines of what? I mean, we wouldn't be able to see it to the same extent that we've seen it with with Gambit and Rogue and stuff. But there's there's so much more that they could have done. Like so much. Oh, God, more. yeah. Oh God. Uh, the 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 other they. Just Basically, Hugh, Hugh Jackman was the star, wasn't he? So they just pushed Hugh Jackman yeah. to the moon and back. That that was the thing. He was the standout star of it all. Yeah. So they pushed him to the moon. So that, that that's how... I mean, it, they even did first class, but because everyone were like, it's not got Wolverine in it, I'm not watching it. So they even had to bring Wolverine into Days of Future Past and then a couple of other... You know, they, 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 they had to bring him into it. Just popped him in it. <laughs> I just think that I just think it's a real shame because we've had so many X Men films, and none of them have really featured heavily on the other the other X Men stories. When you've yeah. got so much comic book, you've got so much history there. You've got so many Maybe. good heart wrenching stories. Well, I mean that the X Men Gifted showed you that, didn't they? I mean they didn't even use any of the main feature X Men, and they still managed to make an amazing com like uh, TV series that was heavily overlooked oh, gifted, by a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, Gifted was like, yeah, that was one of my favorite X properties. Like, but I just think that everyone movie wise became so used to having Wolverine that if Wolverine wasn't in it, like you said, he, um, people kind of boycotted it. And then they pushed, pushed Mystique. Mystique became the big one because of obviously, yeah. um, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. But I was just like, yeah, I just, I, I just really pleased that it's, we're finally kind of getting the X Men that we deserve. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think. So I'm um, trying to sort my if, mic out. My mic decided it's to fine. kind of fall, fall down. <laughs> if um, if the smart, which I think they are, over at the you know at the Marvel movie creation department, whatever you want to call them, um, at Marvel Studios, I think they will focus on other X Men that we've not had films about for a long time. You know what I mean? I don't. I think if they're smart, they'll yeah. leave. Will. After this Deadpool and Wolverine outing, they'll leave Wolverine out for a while. I reckon they should do the original X Men and focus on that. So it's you know Cyclops, Jean Grey, uh, Iceman, Beast, like, and focus on the original the, like, team. Form. That would be cool. uh, well, no, because they've already shown That'd him as Blue, cool. haven't they? I, I wish they would, but they have already shown him as Blue, Blue Beast, haven't they? Yeah, but only in an alternate universe. In an alternate universe, yeah. I mean, they could they could give him in his you know human ape form first. That that would be awesome before he goes big and furry. That would definitely be doable. That would definitely be doable. I can't <clears> figure <throat> out which way the screw goes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just sitting watching you look at the mic. This microphone just wiggling everywhere. I was just because I've, I've <laughs> lost it and I've like I can't figure out which way the screw goes. I'm trying to talk. Um. Well, yeah, before... I don't know. I don't know. How many more Sorry, episodes have we got? Uh, quite a few. <laughs> quite a right, few. There's still, there's still a lot left, isn't there? We're there's not, still about. We're there's not... still. Yeah, we're only. About, I think we're only in episode five, aren't we? So there's still. There's at least what six or seven. Yeah. Wait, was it twelve okay. episodes overall or something? I think something like that. Uh, but yeah, there's still quite a bit to go. So we've got a long time yet. So before we move on to, because I, I know we want to discuss Fallout, and I think that's going to be a major discussing point. Uh, so before before we jump onto that, I just want to I just want to say um, there was an announcement out of uh, Disney this week as well. Yeah. Which we have touched on, we have touched on the park news before. Um, so uh, this is a little bit closer to home this time round. Disneyland Paris have had their sort of big announcement because uh, I know they're making their big Frozen expansion and they're, they're looking to expand the parks further. Um, well, they've announced that there's going to be another land built uh, on that lake. They haven't announced what it is yet, but it's going to be a fully immersive experience. So that they're, they're hinting towards the Galaxy's Edge sort of thing. So I yeah. think I, de I definitely think a Star Wars land is coming there probably. But I'm wondering, it, I reckon, yeah, I, I just don't reckon it'll be another, I don't reckon it'll be the same as what Florida and California have got. I think they'll be smarter, and I think they'll give us something based on the Mandalorian or something more modern. Yeah, that makes sense. Rather than go that for makes... the old school stuff. Um, but they also changed the name of the park. What, of Disneyland so, Paris? No, so you've got Disneyland Paris, which is made up of the two parks, isn't it? You've got Disneyland Park. 
Yeah. And then you've got the uh, the studios. Yeah. They've renamed the studios. It's now going to be called the Disney Adventure World. <laughs> Ooh. Um, and obviously they've, they've built the big expansion, which you've already seen with the, the Marvel stuff. And mm -hmm. they're starting to build out that way. They've got a big lake that's been uh, man-made. And yep. basically they're going for that kind of Epcot feel, you know, the big circle and all yep. the stuff built around it. So they're going for that. And there's going to be a new a new hotel built and all sorts being added to the village, and they're really expanding on Paris. But they did confirm that like um, Arendelle was being built, didn't they? Oh yeah, Arendelle's built. Arendelle's done early. That yeah. that'll be opening up later this summer, I believe. All right. Okay. Cool. I just had to but um, make sure I didn't kind of imagine that. No, no, no. Um, they've already um, like. One of the th one of the many things that they've kind of announced, which I think this is amazing. So you know they've got the Toy Story area. Yeah. yeah. So during the months of October, obviously Halloween in the in America, they do some big changes to the parks, don't they? Yep. Paris wants to get in on the action, and so they will actually retheme the Toy Story Playland area into the Toy Story um, uh, Terror the adventure thing. Yeah. You know the short film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to basically retheme the land to be like that short horror movie basically <laughs> that's cool that's very cool <laughs> so there's a lot they, they announced a load of little things but yeah the big announcement was the renaming of the park and the fact that they're building a new land and they're not telling us what that land is going to be and everyone on the internet has been trying to trying to speculate on what it could be well they've uh, got marvel there they've got disney there so star wars is the obvious star it's wars the, is yeah. yeah star wars is heavily featured already in the disneyland park that's where they've already got the um the star wars set up with with hyperspace mountain and the star tours yeah i personally because it's paris i think they're gonna do beauty and the beast i think they're gonna build gaston's tavern because it's paris it would make sense build gaston's uh, tavern just like they've got in florida and then build the new beauty and the beast ride that they've just built in hong kong which has got the big uh, animatronic that, that actually transforms from beast to human Ooh. you know the scene at the end of the film where he basically lifts up into the air turns around and turns like human yeah. again they've got an animatronic that can do that with smoke and mirrors and stuff which is amazing technology and um i reckon they're going to build that ride they'll build the be i guess restaurant and they'll build the gaston's tavern and make it an immersive land to look like bell's village with the castle and everything the amount of people that are gonna and do but, videos of <laughs> well, the beauty and the beast beauty and the beast is one of the biggest <laughs> disney movies of all time that everyone loves it's and disneyland so paris many, why would they not do it there's gonna be so many videos of people skipping down the road to oh there she goes her name is duty <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just gonna be tiktok is gonna be flooded with people doing like beauty and the beast segues that's, that's yeah that's a good shout mate that is a good shout actually that's yeah i would i would be well up for seeing more lands kind of immersive lands kind of built around the films i think that would mm -hmm. be a win-win i think that you know there's a huge lion king opportunity like to do like yeah. the that would be good pride rock and everything like that there's a little mermaid would be a brilliant one as well i don't know mm -hmm. how you would do that because obviously it's under the sea but you know um beauty and the beast like you say is definitely one if they're doing it for frozen already as well with arendale like, it would make sense for that whole lake to just feature different princess lands. and then you've got toy story like you said already so mm -hmm. that that would work that really would work and other other parks do it as well so like excuse me over here we've got chessington world adventures they've got yeah. jumanji land now which is obviously a, a a land based on the jumanji movies Obviously, they've got the um, Avatar um, part yep. in Florida, like so. So, other places do kind of build things based on single properties as opposed to franchises. So, yeah, I just I, th I think Star Wars is a, a safe bet because they're, they're going to want to do something more with Star Wars in Paris because there are people that don't have the opportunity to get over to Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Um, so i think it's coming but i think beauty and the beast is a good shout mate yeah just because it's it's paris and it's the film set in paris it just for that for me just makes sense alone yeah. european uh, expansion and a european park yeah and to have something that would draw people over to paris exclusively yeah yeah good shout mate. Oh, yeah good shout um 
cool right we're running out of time let's talk fallout yeah the the biggest news of the uh, yeah the biggest thing of this week though has been fallout hasn't it that has been amazing <clears throat> now you, I, i've said this before i've never played the games properly <gasps> never played the game properly i know the concept of the games and i've had a little bash around on them and stuff but i've never played them properly properly as a diehard kind of game like with the resident evil games i played them all the way through well fallout... strap in because i'm about to tell you sorry go on <laughs> Go on, go on. I was gonna say, well, strap in because I'm about to bore you to death with com with references to the game. <laughs> no, go for it. But from a from a, a perspective of not playing the game, mm -hmm. the television show is still massively watchable, and the story is fantastic. I am totally sold on like the the vault people and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> like I'm I'm watching it, kind of thinking to myself, where would I be? Would I be somebody that would be in a vault, or would I be like a ghoul, or would I be like one of these people trying to sell my leg, or you know, <laughs> this kind of stuff? But go for it. They have literally just they've created such an iconic feel for that TV series, and it literally is an adaptation of the game. It feels like you play in the game, literally um it, little things like when she comes out the vault for the first time and puts a hand up like that yeah in the game that is in i think it's fallout 3 when the vault opens for the first time all you see is the, is the hand like that going like that and like the world behind it all blurred because he's obviously seeing the sun for the first time they, they kept that reference in and yeah. the fact that they kept like bottle caps as the currency is like their thing um her at the beginning when she's basically saying she wants a mate uh, and basically to to trade with the other vault yeah. uh, because she's sick of having cousin fun um <laughs> it cracked me up that was funny but that was basically the beginning of the game where you choose your stats that was literally the um i forgot the acronym but that was literally them saying uh like doing the choosing of your of your your stats your pickpocketing and your charisma level and yeah. that was her choosing her stats basically um they kept the pit boy accurate with all the different things you can do on the pit boy um that reference point in the second episode that she's given to go uh with with the doctor guy to take him to the place yeah um, that that is actually a place in the fortnite in the in the fallout games you can go that is an actual location in the games Oh, wow. um there's so many references like the dog that that's fallout 4 that is it's called dog meat <laughs> in, the, in the game that's a direct reference um there's so many uh they even did obviously the thumb like nobody really knew about the thumb reference and no. like i i mentioned it to you last week because i've been a big fallout fan since the like the game first came out yeah and uh, yeah that 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 was like a very old reference from like one of the first games did has play in the game mm. do you know where the story's going yeah it's based on fallout 3 and 1 at the moment. <laughs> i'm not telling you any endings or anything okay, it's just it's based on fallout 3 and 1 okay because in fallout 3 um in the beginning it's liam neeson's your dad which i think that was a frigging missed opportunity not to have liam neeson as the dad to cameo in the first episode Oh, really? They missed an opportunity because yeah, Liam Neeson voiced the dad in the in the game, oh. and it's the same sort of setup that they do it in that game, uh, for in that beginning of that episode. But then they've gone completely left field. They've gone completely away from that and kind of created their own story. But like the bro the brotherhood is in the game. So like the big steel mechs that they are yep. that that is very accurate to the game. The ghouls and stuff that's all very accurate. Um, even the all the snacks and things like the the squirrel on a stick or whatever, all that's kind of all reference to the game. Did um, did you know about Vault Thirty Two then when they opened no. up for the mating thing? You didn't see that coming. That's that's not a reference I'm, I'm aware of. There's thousands of vaults. The, I can't remember the names of the vaults that we were in in the games because it's not you're only in the vault for like all of ten minutes while you do the tutorial, and then you just it's about exploring the world, isn't it? Um, right. so like I don't really remember the, what the vaults were in the game, but right, yeah. okay, because I didn't see that coming at all. Where they had the whole wedding and everything, and then and then it all went. When, when, when that yeah, was brilliant like, I, it was just amazing like it was really really good um yeah i just I'm, I'm loving every second of it i just think it's such a good show and such a good story mm -hmm. um there's is jamie lee curtis in this jamie lee curtis I don't, i'm not sure i thought i read that she was in it who who is in it I know, I know Matt Berry's in it. I know Matt Berry's in it from IT crowd. Hell's bells. I know he's going to be in it. 
he's the voice oh. of he's he's in the is he's in it as himself and I think he's one of the voices of one of the robots later down the line. I've only seen two episodes so far, so I've not met him yet. I've met him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I need to have a look quickly. Jamie Lee Curtis is in is in maybe you're thinking of um that other one um with with uh ah oh, Borderlands. Are you thinking of Borderlands? Because she's oh, in that. Oh yes, that's yeah, a very that similar post-apocalyptic kind of thing. Yes, that's been announced, hasn't it? Borderlands. Yeah. No, she's in that. Yeah. No, this is um, this I'm is very different. Correct me. That's Borderlands. I remember <laughs> seeing her name linked to something post-apocalyptic, and yeah. I wondered if she was like because in my head I was like I'm sure Jamie Lee Curtis, and I thought she was going to be her mum because you know obviously her her mum's yeah like died like we don't know if she is like we're, we're being led to seconds. believe she's okay i talked to myself um but we're being led to believe that she's dead um so that's where i kind of put it i was like as she's kind of looking for her mum i'm kind of thinking oh i wonder if jamie lee curtis is playing the mum and therefore she's not really dead or anything like that um but yes there's a couple of people correcting me now shelly said borderlands looks good um hyperdelic said that's borderlands um yes why he has gone though Hyperdelic also said giant mutant axolotto axolotto is that how you pronounce it oh, axolot yeah axolot um yes i absolutely loved that scene that or that particular thing and i can't remember what episode that is i think it might be episode three so i don't think super Soul's seen it yet but that was very cool i don't want to give any spoilers away but there's there's something very gross about its mouth that still kind of freaks me out a little bit now um but yeah i just i'm really enjoying it there is one thing that i don't quite get though and i don't know whether super sorrel will be able to help me out with this when he gets back or anybody in the chat could potentially help me out with but the the cooper character who's like the ghoul um and obviously the here he is he's back he's back so cooper's character he's he's the the ghoul and he's yeah. the the cowboy from the films isn't he yes he, is. he was there when he yeah he was an actor and he was there when that first bomb went off wasn't he it was with his daughter mm -hmm. and stuff like that he also then, filmed the vault tech he also filmed all the vault tech um commercials like, and commercials stuff. Yeah, and like stuff because yeah. he made the, the yeah. thumbs up famous that's the whole point yeah of the... so we yeah. saw all that later on but <laughs> I'm sure that there was a thing saying 200 years later. Yeah. So how has he lasted that long? He's a ghoul. When we found him, he was buried underground. He's a mutant. He's been oh, kept okay. alive. So when we found him, he was underground being fed drips of all sorts. That's why he said in, in that scene in the second film where he says, that's a that's a tiny bit of, you know, a tiny bit of medicine in a big pot of drugs. Right. Okay. Fair enough. So that was, that was what I was just, and I didn't know whether that was because I didn't know the games or not, but I was kind of like, how is he still going? Yeah, but, there's um, ghouls and mutants and all sorts in Borderlands. The radiation's play, paid its toll on the world. Big ass cockroaches not, and Fallout, not Borderlands. Don't confuse sorry, me Fallout. more. Sorry, Fallout. <laughs> well, we do see the cockroaches because obviously you see them in that for, in that episode. There is an episode later on that is called the Ghouls. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very good episode. Probably <laughs> that's what I'm saying, but. I kind of found out more about them and stuff like that, but I still didn't get the answer as to why 200 odd years later, he was still <laughs> kind of alive and kicking, but his character, is he a bad guy or is he like everyone in everyone in that world is morally corrupt in some way or another. Cause he's a cool character. He's a cool like, guy. Yeah. He's a bouncer. He well, cool. Yeah. He was very, yeah. Like he, there's something very cool about him I, I don't like him as an actor and as a cowboy but as a ghoul <laughs> i was like man this dude is like fire he's cool yeah um, it was it that the actor that plays him it was ruined for me with sons of anarchy i'm afraid oh, remember yeah. his, do you remember his appearance in sons of anarchy he is yeah <laughs> who is his character the um transvestite that works in the pond. Oh yes, of course he is. Do we he sorry is. him? <laughs> sorry him in it's, full. Uh, hang on, let me see. What's his name? Walton something. Mm -hmm. Walton Goggins. He was, all, he was also in Big Bang Theory. Yeah, he was in loads. He was in loads. He's been in loads of things. He's, he's, a, he's a very well known face. I, I don't. I wouldn't know his name off by heart, but I mean, I know his face. He's also in Invincible as well. Oh, is he? Yeah. Um, so is the girl, isn't she? The main girl. She's in Invincible as well, isn't she? The main girl, she voices someone in Invincible, I'm yes, sure. Yes, I believe she does, actually. 
She's also in Yellow Jacket and a couple of other like big things. So I mean, like, she's like up and coming as well. Ella Purnell. Shelley she... Ken ordered for delivery. <laughs> Is she in a... I'm glad no, I could help not... people. She's not in. in, in she's oh, not. She, in not. In she was in Kick Ass Two. Ah, okay. She was in Malef... 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 Maleficent. Yeah. Maleficent. <laughs> <laughs> um. She was in one of my favourite films of previous years, and that's that Miss Penegree's Home for Peculiar Children. Did you ever yeah, see yeah. that? Yeah, that was good, yeah. And that as well. She's in Yellow Jacket. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's done quite a lot. She's done quite a lot. But yeah, no, uh, Walter Goggins is in Sons of Anarchy as the transvestite, isn't he? What's the he name? Is. He's so good in that as well. So good in that. Um, well, you want to know the actor's name? No, his name's Walter Goggins. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think what the cat, what his character's called in Sons of Anarchy. Oh, um, I can't remember now off the top of head. Venus Van Dam. <laughs> 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 My name is Venus Van Dam. Like he was so good, <laughs> so good. Um, yeah. Oh, I love Sons of Anarchy. It's one of my yeah. Because uh, what's he called? Oh, skinhead guy. Like went with him. <laughs> No, it weren't Tig. It, you'd think it would be Tig, but it wasn't Tig. Oh, Juice. Juice. It was Juice. Yeah. The, it was Juice the kind of yeah, set juice, up with him. But Tig <laughs> is, like, obsessed with her. Like, Oh, yeah, Tig's just, obsessed with her, obviously. He just thinks that she's the most beautiful person in the world. And it's just... <laughs> I, I just... I love Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy just is everything the kind of Grand Theft Auto game should be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all those kind of side characters and side <laughs> stories and all that like oh i just love it absolutely love it how there's not been like a grand theft auto-esque sons of anarchy game made yeah mm. i don't know but yeah i'm loving him in so, fallout fallout so, is hands down one of the best series of the year like for that and x-men 97 to be running at the same time is mind-blowing so you know in you know in that scene in the second film where the where the ghoul sort of like it sort of shows him going whoop boom and like yeah. like the kind of slow down time a tiny bit for him to do it and he like spins around and shoots everyone that's taken directly from the game so in the game you can there's like a you use your pit boy basically and you can choose like i want to shoot him in the head i want to shoot him in there there's like a bullet time photography kind of thing and you just show, you click go if you've got enough stamina and then you, it'll just show your character going boom 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 and like blowing oh, everyone wow. away so that's directly from the game that's cool that is cool um yeah, because just, of the popularity I, of of this TV series, I'll be re I'll be really surprised if Coca Cola do not team up with them and actually release a new Coca Cola. I'll be so surprised if one of the companies doesn't jump on that. Yeah, they'll be daft not to just for a brief period of time. So before we kind of get to the end of the show, do you think we're going to see action figure collectibles from this show? McFarlane have got the toy rights and they've already announced the movie maniac series, but I think someone, yeah, I think, I think it'll be McFarlane. I'll probably release some seven inch action figures very soon. I really hope that we get like a hot toys or one of the third party companies do like a, a one six scale goal. That'd yeah. Or maybe awesome. super seven, super seven might jump on not, not super seven. Um, diamond select. Sorry. They, they like that, 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 them kind of properties, don't they? So they might jump on something like that. If Diamond Select could get it. But then they had Rebel Moon figures like literally ready to drop when Rebel Moon mm. came out. So I'm surprised that I'm if surprised gonna do that it, there isn't it, yeah. something now. I'm surprised there isn't something dropping now, why it's like why it's out and why it's fresh. But there's eight episodes altogether, isn't there? There is. You can binge watch them all right now on Amazon. And I'm on episode six, so I've literally <laughs> got three episodes left. And I'm I'm excited to see where it goes. I really like is it Maximus as well, like the geezer that's part of the Brotherhood? Yep. In Maximus. Something have like you that. how far have you seen on his story? So yeah, we I've we've met the Brotherhood. Um in chat I'm up to the episode the second episode I've just finished tonight. So that's the one where obviously he um I forgot his name, but he's another well known actor, the guy inside the mech suit. And he's his squire, isn't he? He gets attacked by the yeah. big mutated bear. Yeah. Um, who's the, who's the little, um, runty guy in the brotherhood? The runty guy? Yeah. I'm trying to think now. I'm going to, I'm going to have to have a look. I'm going to have to have a look. Um, 
I don't know who you mean. Thaddeus. Played by Johnny Pemberton. Johnny Pemberton. Pemberton. Um, he is from Superstore, Ant Man. Yeah, Twenty One Jump Street. Twenty One Jump Street. Yeah. Community. I've got no um, idea though. I don't. I don't think I've met him yet. I don't think have I? I don't remember him. Anyway. Yeah, you you would have seen him. You would have seen him in that first Brotherhood scene. He's kind of one of the ones beating up on. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, he's just one in ones that I saw him and I was like, wow, I really recognize this guy, but I don't know where from. Mm. And even now looking at IMDB, like I can't think where, where I've picked, where I've seen him from. Um, but yeah, he's, I quite like his character, but yeah, he's good. He's a good show and I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. I think it's going to end on a cliffhanger though. They're going to, they're going to pen it up for another season, aren't they? So I, I already know. <laughs> I already know. I already know where they're gonna go with season two. What you legitimately know, or this is a prediction? Well, the the char- the characters in it, <laughs> the character the character's already there. So they'd be daft not to. I think they've already put in uh, the the uh, the idea there. Is it a brother going out? No. So it's one of the um, suit guys. Is it's he it, it becomes the owner of uh, New Vegas. So oh, Fallout okay. New Vegas. So that I reckon oh. they'll change the setting because right, right now it's based in like Philadelphia, California kind of areas. Whereas I think they'll change it up for the second series and move them out to like Vegas to like pay homage to the that, that game and stuff. New Vegas game. Yeah. It was Michael Rapport that I couldn't think of the name of. Um, Rapport. Yes. He's in um, loads, isn't he? Yeah, he's the guy from obviously he was in Friends, Big Bang Theory. He's been in so many movies over the years. He, yeah, he was. There's a lot of people that guest appear in this. I've noticed. Like, I've, I've just, I've just literally loaded up the, the, the cast list, and there's like, you've, you've got your main cast of like six, seven people, but then you've got your reoccurring, but then, then the guest list is ridiculous. Oh, really? The amount of people that wanted to be in this is insane. They're all yeah. like well-known actors and stuff. But yeah. um, yeah, I'm like, I'm looking forward to, to seeing Matt Berry. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Matt Berry. <laughs> So I can't wait to see him cool. as the robot helper and stuff like that. I know, yeah. I know he plays the helper as the robot. <laughs> yeah. The 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 robot scene, the robot snippet, <laughs> like section of the episode is very cool. He's a very, yeah, it's very comical. So every time I hear his voice, I just think of IT crowd. That's all I can hear in my head. Yeah. He's he's very funny. Isn't it? Hello, Jen. That <laughs> is exactly how he speaks in this. <laughs> That's his yeah. regular voice. That's just how yeah. he talks um yeah no i'm excited i'm very excited um very quickly uh one last thing that just came to mind at cinema con as well they saw mm-hmm. sonic 3 they saw a clip of sonic 3 yeah they saw a clip of shadow didn't they they've but not they, said who was voicing they him yet they all not announced who's voicing him i just thought of that when you were talking about his uh, matt Berry's voice um <laughs> but yeah they've not announced who's actually voicing shadow so i think it's going to be someone big <laughs> Chris Pratt. <laughs> or, he watches uh, everything else. Why not? Chris Hemsworth or Chris Pratt. Yeah. It'll be one of the Chris's. Yeah. Um, cool. So before next, <laughs> before next week, we've obviously got Rebel Moon coming out on Friday. Um, <clears throat> I would say uh, Abigail's out of the cinema, so we'll probably have seen that. Um, we've also got the rest of Fallout. We've got the next episode S- of X Men '97, Civil War as well, which looks very good. That's going to be at the cinemas this week. You Which seen much of that, that one? Civil War, Kirsten wrong. Dunst. The first, first film I've seen Kirsten Dunst in for years. And she's playing a news reporter that's reporting on a civil war that's broke out in America. The civil war, that's the second civil war. Yeah. And it's East yeah. versus West this time. Yeah. Um, obviously, with the world we're currently living in, it's a very political kind of feeling movie. A lot of Americans have said it was very dark and quite realistic and they were a bit scared as to where yeah. their country was going if that's what people are thinking about. I remember seeing the trailer for that now. Yeah um yeah it looks very good so yeah i think i'm i'm my dad wants to go see that with me so i'm thinking I'm, i think i'm going to the cinema twice this week i think yeah but um I yeah it's, it's a, that that does look like a film to see on the big screen that one i'll do my <clears> best <throat> to get up there and i'll uh i'll see if i can see them both as well this week abigail try and get abigail at least we need to talk about the vampire ballet 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 movie abigail will be the first <laughs> if you're definitely going this week i'll make sure I well, i'm definitely going to see abigail i'm definitely going to see abigail <laughs> i'll get to see it then, and then i want to uh, i want to see that before everyone starts ruining it on the internet yeah 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 um did you hear as well very quickly before we do go mm. megan and 
Chucky did cross over. Yeah, kind of. They did. They crossed over. <laughs> they they crossed over. There's no there's no denying it. That was a crossover. <laughs> he says her name in the episode. He does. It's crossed over. It's done. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Leave that alone now because that's happened. Right? <laughs> we don't need another crossover. Um, but they missed the trick though because they should have mentioned the uh four foot toy. That's that's where the crossover should have come. Yeah. Like yeah, him yeah. criticizing that. But there we go. Right. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Episode 147. Geek Week done. Um if you've been watching along, we've tried to get to comments as we go in, but thank you very much for your involvement. Um, we will of course be back this time next week with episode 148, slowly creeping towards that episode 150. If you're watching us on repeat, what is it they've got to put in the comments? Mr. Hashtag Super catch up crew. Hashtag catch up crew. But we've already got one in the comments because somebody's watching us. SMD is watching us. Slightly delayed. So there we go. <laughs> Hashtag catch up crew. Um, anything else you want to add to it before we do? We've, we've covered loads this week. We have covered loads. It was it was it was a good week this week. There's a lot of news. Um, no, I've got I've got nothing really else to say. I've just uh, I've, been, I've got a lot of content coming out this week. So keep keep tuning in. I'm sure I'm sure Jacob's the same. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot lots of coming out. So keep tuning into all the channels. And yeah, next Sunday we'll be back for another geek week in a review. You got anything arriving this week that you know of? No, I'm not spending money for at least three more weeks because I'm skint as a yeah. I've spent far too much today. My bill at Smith this morning was 130 pounds. Wow. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, that's me done for the month. I I'll, think I've got Ken <laughs> coming tomorrow. I don't know what. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so a few, a few people in the comments like Shelley does as well now. Yeah, I know. I know. Look, Shelley. Ken ordered for delivery. Um, that's cool. I must admit, though, I did see a few scalpers throwing it up on, on Facebook groups and that for like yeah. 35 quid and stuff like that. So naughty, I am naughty. very pleased. I do appreciate that. Um, yeah, that's about <laughs> it. Thank you very much for tuning in. Of course, you know, do all the usuals. Check out the um, uh, the description of the videos for all the links. Thank Ooh. you very much. Oh. No, just I was just gonna add right quick. Sorry, just gonna add. Uh, obviously, I've been, I've done, I've already done my what, what's new in Smiths for this month. I've already done my what's new in B and M for this month. I will be doing a what's new in Home Bargains as well because we, we need to check out their toy section. Ooh. They're my three monthly videos now that I'm gonna put out. So I'm gonna, if you if you want to you know see what's in stock, that's what I will be doing. I'll be hitting up four Home Bargains this week, and I'll be filming it. So there'll be a big video going out on my channel later on this week. So we'll see what's in at Home Bargains. They need to step it up. Home bargains back in they like have been. That's why I'm jump. They've been getting better, and that's why I'm jumping yeah. back on them. I've ignored them for a while, but recently they started getting in um, the zombies, the Five Nights at Freddy's. It's all the stuff I like, and it's not a lot there of like, like like action figures. But they are jumping on like reduced versions of Lanky Box, Piggy, um, Poppy's Playtime, Five Nights at Freddy's, all the kids stuff that everyone tries to get. They've got them all heavily reduced. Awesome. So awesome. yes, it, it's always a good thing if you if you can see if you get if I can save people a few quid, I'll always do that. I'll have to see. I'll have to go and have a look. But there we go. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, check out the description. Give us likes, shares, all that kind of stuff. Um, we will be back next week with episode 147. Till next week. Keep it geek. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and of course subscribe. Tune in next week for another live show. Until then, keep it geek. Stay up to date at www.geekweekinreview.co.uk.